The following presentation is made possible by EA Sports Game Changers. What is going on guys? Ben Glugini coming back at you with another video. And guys, I promise, I know it's not everybody's favorite. This is the last post-commentary rebuild or probably even video that I do. I don't really like to do post-commentary that much. Really not a fan. But today I have a fantasy draft rebuild for you guys. You guys seem to love the fantasy drafts. Maybe we'll make this kind of like a weekly to, you know, uh, fortnightly, if you will. That's every two weeks uh, on the channel. We might do that if you guys want. Make sure to like the video. Subscribe if you're new for more Madden 19 content. A little bit of background before we get into this first pick, right? When doing a rebuild, it's going to be over multiple seasons. So I'm not exactly looking for the best quarterback there. We had the fifth pick. So we had a number of different options here. I kind of wanted to go with something different. If you guys... See that on the Patriots. The reason why is we're not going to get to the Patriots rebuild for a little while. And I figure it's just jerseys. Who cares? Might as well see the Patriots in some capacity, even though I'm, of course, not a Patriots fan. Uh, I guess it's not, of course, if you guys are new here. But uh, I am not. I am a New York Giants fan. So I don't, I don't really care about the Patriots, if I'm being honest. I decided to go eventually with Carson Wentz as my draft pick, which you guys will see here in a minute. A little bit of background, though is that I did record this in Orlando, Florida at EA Sports. Thank you again so much to them for flying me out. That's why I have this recorded uh, in the past, of course. Not live comp. I'm going to do all my videos live comp. It's just, it's just so much more fun. I think you guys have a better time. It's easier for me to make jokes. We have just a, a great time doing it. But, of course, I like to take some players that I like. I like to take some players that are going to develop well. Earl Thomas is pretty much checking off both of those boxes now he's not exactly going to develop well for a while he is 29 years old and aj green's a guy that's 30 but we would follow it up with back-to-back -back picks with earl thomas and aj green earl thomas is my second favorite player in the nfl i'm a huge texas longhorns fan et3 fits perfectly into that you don't see jarrell casey ever so i figured let's get jarrell casey he's ranked number 69 nice um so this was kind of a weird draft. That's my phone. Don't worry about it. If you guys heard that, Adrian Amos is another cool player. Only 25 years old. Quick development. He looks very, very good in the game. So decided to uh, add him to the secondary. So it was just kind of like an unorthodox draft. As Alvin Kamara will also join the squad. Very good running back. Also, I wouldn't really mind where players are ranked in there on the left via the draft analysis. It doesn't really matter too much. Marlon Humphrey would be another player that I'd take. If you guys want me to, to do a tutorial on how to do fantasy drafts, and that's taking into account development, overall, how well they're going to progress, how young they are, three of those were kind of the same thing. But it's it's really, it's age, development, and overall, not necessarily in that order. Brandon Brooks would be another player we add to the team. Somebody's got a block for Alvin Kamara, right? So figure, why not have it be Brandon Brooks? He's pretty good. Malik Jackson would be another player that we look to add. However, uh, I was talking to some idiots, probably RBT or somebody at EA at this time. So my pick got skipped, and then I followed it up with Malik Jackson. I'm like, who in the hell did the CPU pick for me? And that was Sean Lee. I was not too pleased about this. Sure, he's a 96 overall, but he's also 32. He's 32 years old. He's going to already be just shooting down the moment he steps onto the field and overall... He's going to be like a 90 overall in two years. So that's really what we're taking there. Trent Brown, 82 overall, add him to the offensive line. He's going to probably start at left tackle for us. Christian McCaffrey, I figured he's got the best development here. He's an 87 overall. This is pretty good value. Running backs do get a lot of touches, especially the second running back, I should say. Um... They're going to get a lot of action, so we might as well have a good one. Also, how could we not take the beast that is Larry Ogunjobi out of Charlotte? Larry is an absolute monster. I figure we'll also take another young defensive tackle to pair with Malik Jackson. Uh, and now Larry Ogunjobi and Taven Bryant out of Florida, staying in Florida with the Jacksonville Jaguars, as uh, I'm pretty sure they drafted him. Forrest Lamp would be another one, as of course we're going we're gonna to turn up and turn on the lamp. That's, that's a bad one. That one really didn't even make much sense. Gary and Conley would be another one that I would take. Big fan of him out of Ohio State. Looking for him to have a good season. DJ Chark's another one. A ton of potential for him. I forget who drafted him. 
you can comment it, but I I know the answer. I just I, it's escaping me right now. Uh, who drafted DJ Chark? The Panthers maybe? In like the fourth round, third round. I have no idea who took DJ Chark. Honestly, I wish I had my phone, but I dropped it. Dante Jackson, another young rookie cornerback that we took. He has like 96 speed. Another guy that profiles well athletically is Tyus Bowser, second year player out of Houston. We would add him to the team as well. Really just in a fantastic spot. And I'm like, we got pretty much every spot filled in. Might as well go kicker and punter, get the best in the NFL on who but hook em horns, Justin Tucker. That is the best kicker in the NFL, debatably in NFL history. And whatever you want to say about Johnny Hecker, Marquette King, I mean, he's just got that charisma that Johnny Hecker maybe doesn't have. So Marquette King would be the newest addition to this fantastic or fan assy draft if you will so it's a pretty good looking team of course i believe that's albert wilson we got tyler croft i'm trying very hard to see what this says it's a smaller screen but i think it's taiwan taylor or trent taylor it's probably trent as we would move forest lamp uh, and change his position we have matt Breida behind christian mccaffrey to stand some of the backups that we have here uh obviously you guys saw the entire starting roster pretty much get drafted so a lot of these guys are not news to anybody. Calicio Semley, I don't know if I talked over that, but he's on the team, as is Justin Britt. Calicio Semley is a fantastic one. We got what? Is that John Timu? We got Tyus Bowser, you guys saw. Carl Bradford's in there. Is that, I think that's Rashawn Golden. There's John Timu. Um, Quentin Rollins is out there. I believe that's... I can't see what letter that is. Kerry Wynn behind Jarrell Casey. Ethan Westbrooks is actually a starter on the team. We forgot to take a left end, apparently. So he's going to be out there. Bunch of defensive tackles. I think that's Elijah Lee at backup left outside linebacker. I think that might be Sean Dion Hamilton at middle linebacker number three. That's Dante Jackson. And Dante Johnson actually is on there too. Fun fact about him. He and Dante Jackson do not spell Dante the same way. Oh, I pulled it up too. I probably made the same joke in real life. What a corny piece of shit i am but dante jackson yeah of course he, they both spell it differently because why not and uh that's pretty much the team so now we go into the stage from here is everybody and it's how do we get rid of some guys to bring in some better guys we're making trades off the bat or at least trying to christian mccaffrey's not going to play much he was trade bait and tj clemmings one of the worst offensive tackles in the nfl over the past couple of seasons will be a part of that trade to the patriots or from the patriots to the arizona cardinals travis swanson as well for a first round pick and another pick as well as we would simulate to that midseason mark and seeing how this team is doing we've got a young quarterback we got a young we got an entire young team for the most part and we're doing all right nothing crazy nothing terrible five and three and of course i don't know who's on the packers i don't know who anybody has because it's a fantasy draft it's like what if the nfl restarted and they had a fantasy draft the dumbest title ever shout out to my man rbt but we would end up going to the playoffs we got the wild card going 10 and 6 and hopefully advancing on to, into the divisional we got to face the Steelers to do so though as you can see I have auto upgrading on Carson Wentz up to a 91 overall defensively we're all right as well Adrian Amos going up Earl Thomas even improves as well Marlon Humphrey getting better Gary and Conley pretty much staying about the same as Larry Ogunjobi takes over that starting defensive tackle role as we would move Malik Jackson to left end. Of course, he was a defensive end in that 3-4 in Denver a couple of years back, but we would simulate to the divisional. Steamrolling through the Steelers to face the 12-4 Kansas City Chiefs. I actually didn't remember, and I, that was a complete stab in the dark, shot in the dark, to see if we would make the uh, divisional, and we end up doing it. Patriots, Chiefs. And that's where we lose. All right, not too good, but it's the first year. It's not a rebuild if you win the Super Bowl year one, although it, it still could be if I title it that way. Free agency in the second year, or I guess first free agency is always trapped. Always trapped. Okay, that's not even a word uh, in that context. At least it's always trash because the players are always terrible as the Giants would go quarterback number one overall. We had the third pick from Arizona let's make some magic happen with it who do we take looking at a lot of wide receivers we got Ray Lawson Alan Hubbard Rashawn Bell. we got Tank Kinney that guy seems like a tank 
but the pick would end up being Allen Hubbard, six foot six at a Stanford, 79 overall, star development, ranked number 11. The class we took up at number three, 84 speed. He had 91 spectacular catch, so he's exactly what we wanted to add to our team. And we would advance uh, to number 26, where I take a tight end. Lawrence Portilla, apparently a reach because they don't realize we're at 26. We're not taking him number one overall. We're taking him at three or 26, and he's ranked number three. 82 overall for the tight end, and we would follow that up with Rashawn. And he would be a 35th uh, ranked player. Took him at 35, so it made a lot of sense. 77 overall for him. And we're going to follow it up with another receiver. Am I kidding myself? Apparently not. Spencer Arsenault, ranked number 27 in the class. We took him at 58. It's working that time. Am I I'm not going to take another receiver. Trevion Faulkner, welcome to the team. As we take, what is that, my fourth receiver? What was I doing? What was I doing at this time? Oh my God, don't take another receiver. Is he going to? Andre Barton would be the pick. Star development all the way down here. Only a 72 overall, but that is a good development trait to have. You really really don't mind that, but that would be the last pick that I, I show you guys because I simulated the rest. Brandon Brooks is going to get upgraded just a little bit. And we're looking to trade these receivers. I, I took a lot of them. That had to be the reason behind it. Because we have a lot of them now. DJ Chark is kind of like, what are you doing on the team at this point? Sean Lee is down to an 89 overall. We got him back up to a 90 though here in year two, moving him over to middle linebacker. Plus five block shed, plus two to zone. That is a pretty good upgrade for Sean Lee. But we have a lot of wide receivers and that spells trade bait. Carl Bradford absolutely cannot start. Tyus Bowser isn't exactly ideal. And I'm gonna be honest, if you guys remember when I dropped my phone, I uh, I don't even remember what I wanted to look up, but we're gonna make some trades. Taven Bryant, Albert Wilson, and a first for Levante David. That's a trade. We're also gonna try to move some stuff. That's Parker Hawmiller, a second, and Justin Britt, I guess it's gonna have to be a first. For Yannick Ngakwe, one of the best, one of the most underrated defensive ends in the entire NFL, super young, all the way up to an 89 overall. And he would slot into the team very, very nicely. I'm not positive we were... I think we were running a 3-4 at this point. So I got Levante David to be a middle linebacker. And then I would, of course, upgrade Yannick Ngakwe that, with that skill point that we have. And he would be changed, ultimately, to an outside linebacker to be that edge rusher in our 3-4 scheme. Got his finesse moves up one, agility two, tackle two, plus one to pursuit as well. So we're just in a fine spot. It was about DJ Chark. I remembered... Who took DJ Chark? I have no idea. But we would edit him to be an outside linebacker. He just fits more naturally into that scheme. We want him rushing the passer. I don't really want him dropping back into coverage for no reason. I mean, I guess the reason would be to stop passes from being completed. But he's not really going to be effective in that role. So, you know, why bother? Regardless, we're in a good spot. The team is improving. Mostly because the developments are all good. The players are all young. So the overalls continue to raise while others around the league maybe are going the exact opposite way. So I guess I changed systems. I think it was, it was altering from base 3-4 to multiple 3-4 to see what really would fit better. You can see the scheme fit, but I wasn't really looking at the percentage. I was looking at the way that I would order it. So it's not really too relevant with the scheme fits on there because we would do whatever we wanted. So I was looking for a good 3-4 book and I'm like, eh, the Kansas City Chiefs. They've been pretty known to get some uh, some pressure on the quarterbacks in years past. So we would run with that book in advance to the playoffs. Looking pretty good. And of course, in a fantasy draft rebuild, when I can make my team pretty much as good as I'm capable of in the draft, we're going to be a pretty good team. 11-5, and five, we make the playoffs yet again, advancing to the wild card. And all we have to do is beat, apparently, my namesake, the Cincinnati Bengals. It's not where Bengal comes from. I just happen to like Tigers, and how could you not? They're like the sickest animal. Darian Kindly goes up to an 83 overall. This is going to be a tirade about how cool Tigers are. I don't think it's worth it. You guys pretty much would already know. Most of us, I don't want to say all, who knows. Most of us are going to know what Tigers are. Yeah, there could be guys who've been, uh, you know, like ostriches or emus or whatever. They got their head buried in the sand. They're probably not living too long. They're probably suffocating to death, to be fair. I don't know how those birds do it. Maybe they breathe out of their like asshole or something. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Fun. Alan Hubbard, though, up to an 87 overall. I don't know where this conversation is going, but I'm not sure I'm a gigantic fan. We would 
reorder the depth chart, get our best players in there, and get ready to take on the Bengals in the what is it called? The playoffs? Why am I why am I going brain dead here? Uh, I don't know why I'm in free agency. Oh yeah, I'm looking for a center. We traded our center at some point. I totally forgot that was a thing. But you know what they say, centers don't matter. Is that a, I don't think people say that. Uh, but clearly not, as we advance to the divisional, beating the Bengals 38-3, to as you can see there in the top left in the wild card round of the playoffs. Can we beat the Raiders? Patriots, Raiders, shout out to uh, the tuck rule in that snow game. And yes, we can. The Patriots have a knack for beating the Raiders in the playoffs, apparently, as we have the Texans now. Texans, Patriots, and that was where the road would come to an end for us, unfortunately. But guys, I think that was a pretty fun video. Tried to make the most of the post-com. Let me know if you enjoyed. Let me know what I should do next. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.